Hello to everybody. Um, it is, as you say, Jan, it's very difficult sometimes, you know, to, to be... Um, to be standing up here and talking after the person who's gone before because it's uh, your, your mind's full, isn't it, of all those exciting things and my stomach's still sort of slightly belly laughing from the wild thing um, promotional. I can see why that you've got so many partners who are actually incredibly interesting because I'd love to have you on my team um, as well, which is wonderful. Um, so, yeah, Archimedes training, we've... Um, I, do you know, it's one of the other things I've realised is that I haven't got any notes... <laughs> And that everyone else had notes over here. So, um, so I will just be expounding um, from, my, um, from myself. It is a real pleasure to be here, um, to be standing on the stage, you know, and to be um, amongst so many people who have an, in an innate and immense passion for children and for nature. And how the symbiotic relationship between the two is fundamentally important for the world that we live in today, but also for the generation, for the environment, but also for humanity, for the times that's coming. And it's nice to see uh, Terry here as well. Um, I was here with Terry um, in Northern Ireland and listening to her talk. So now <laughs> it's reciprocal, so thank you very much. I learned a lot about what you were doing and it's inspired me very much, so thank you very much for that. Okay, so I'm a bit of a technophobe. Um, so I'm assuming I just press the button, any button, the white button, oh, the right button. <laughs> um, ah, okay. Also, the other thing is, is that I blush really, really easily, so I will, I will try my best, but... Um, Okay, so um, one of the things I love about this, you know, and Jan, just going back a little bit, you know, to, to what you're saying, is, is the fact that the interaction actually between mud and children um, is very sort of almost primeval, isn't it? And that access to the elements um, and the importance of it and how we can, um, we can support children. Um, I think, um, what is it, one of the, the washing machine... Um, you know, the, the powders, isn't it? It's uh, sort of advertising, you know, that children actually go out and do this kind of thing. Um, I've not actually found a powder that actually gets the dirt out properly. Um, but do you know what? I don't care. Um, this little lad is now, um, he's about 13, um, which is quite an interesting one. But I think it just sort of like, um, um, what's the word? It just... Um, produces, you know, just such a lovely feeling in terms of actually seeing the joy and the excitement that he's had, you know, from exploring within that natural environment. Um, again, this is a, another picture that I love a lot, and it's about changing perspectives, is that we, when we're working in an educational environment or working in a play or with parents, is that sometimes we just don't know what we don't know. And what I love about this one is, is it's an old picture frame, you know, with a perspex front on it, and this little lad is laying out into, on, the, on the ground. So he's actually literally being earthed. And as he's sort of like laying out there and sort of taking in the energy of the environment, you know, and he's got the canopy of trees which are over him, that he's got his group of friends who actually have the... Um, have the picture frame and laying it down so he's actually in control in terms of how close and how far it goes away but as you can see they've actually put some uh, some wriggly worms and some little insects on there so he's actually able to see the world in a very very different way but can control the sense of excitement um, that is actually appropriate for him and when we were talking about the challenge of a stick, I thank you, Jan, because you've actually done the challenge of a stick already for me, um, and the puddles. What I'm interested in when we're talking about that is actually the physical connectiveness that we have, which actually creates that relationship between how we're touching and how we're feeling. What I'm really pleased, has everybody got a piece of string? Okay, if you haven't, there's another ball of string with some scissors down here if you haven't got one. One of the reasons that I've given it to you, you this, you're going to take your piece of string on a bit of a journey, okay? I was going to bring sticks, okay? But I realised on the train all the way from Sheffield, perhaps 100 or 200 sticks may not have gone down too well. So I've kind of bought... It's a bit like being one of those magicians, you know, that has a magic wand that can sort of... Oh, <laughs> change. You can do whatever you want. And what's very exciting is a lot of you are 
uh, uh, touching it, feeling it. What you're doing is creating that movement, aren't you, from the left-hand side of your brain to your right-hand side of your brain. And also, it's 3 o'clock, it's Sunday. Some of you have been here since 9 o'clock yesterday, so I do really appreciate the fact that you're actually still here and your heads are still sort of like looking vaguely forwards, which is, uh, is always <laughs> quite encouraging, which is wonderful. So very much about looking at things in different, different ways. Um, I'm, I'm an ex is it the word an exponent? Is that the word? You know, about children being free, children being excitable, children being full of joy, and the relationship that that happens and that comes through simply walking into the outdoor space. And I think. Um, I think there's that thing, isn't it? I mean, I have a dog, and I'm sure that lots of you have a dog. I mean, you know, my dog sits there looking outside the window, going, take me out, take me out, take me out. You know, and then he kind of like, he looks like I put my socks on, and he's like, come on, come on, come on, come on, are we going, are we going, are we going? Are we going? You know, and we've got children who, who are born like that, but have been trained to sit on that couch. Okay? And I think it's time, isn't it? This is about us, you know, getting getting our children and pushing them forwards, which is great and wonderful. We have, you know, the wonderful Wild Thing Project now to support us in our, in our fight, which is great. I'm talking about forest schools. It's a very, very specific approach. Um, it's something that when I came across forest schools, um, it kind of changed my life in a certain extent to the fact that I actually did give my day job you know, and I want to say, you know, thanks to people like Jan, you know, who were there at the beginning, you know, an inspiration, you know, to actually know that people were believing the same things that I did, and it wasn't just something which was a little bit weird. You know, and also to Liz Knowles, you know, and if it wasn't for Liz, who's here, I'm not sure where she is, muddy faces, you know, if it wasn't for people like Liz, you know, and her passion and, dis, you know, excitement about wanting to run a business, again, I wouldn't be here where I am today until I get a little bit excitable, um, which is great. Um, and I think the two parts of what I'm looking at are in these two photographs. Okay, one of them is about the support, the love, the connection between significant grown-ups and young children and the expectation that children have the right to be loved, to be nurtured, to be looked after. That's their right. Okay, and also about having trained professionals who have an understanding about their roles and responsibilities to support not only the children they're working with in their care, but also as, or to train or to work with parents in order to take them into this outdoor environment, whatever it happens to look like, but into the outdoor environment, in order for them to see the beauty um, and the excitement and the exhilaration the simplicity, but also the complexity of that particular relationship. Okay, and again, you know, we've, had, we've seen a number of photographs, you know, but here we have the inquisitiveness, the curiosity, you know, and I think curiosity, people are talking and using that word, aren't they? What does it actually mean to be curious, you know, and what does it mean to actually look through? And, of course, you know, we're talking about well-being, and we'll have a little look at that um, in a moment but also the top left-hand photograph, you know, which is actually about that time just to contemplate uh, the miracles, you know, of the, the elements that are around us and just spend time just to be able to sit back and, and to, to not have any pressures, which develops that reflective practice and reflective notion um, of who we are. So just thinking from my point of view, I'm thinking about woodlands in particular, um, because that's where forest schools, thus the name forest schools, um, sort of comes from, even though there is an ability to run forest schools in any environment, and I understand that too. You all, if you're early years educationalists, we all know Piaget, um, and I just think that this is um, fundamental. Again, it's not about giving people facts and knowledge in your head, but it's about providing opportunities for problem solving in order to be able to face any opportunity, any challenge later, so that anything is possible. And I think that's where we're um, sort of like moving, moving towards um, here. <coughs> Excuse me. Technology, see, look, I'm going up here again. 
Um, and again, you know, this, you know, the words that people understand, but Forest Schools is a long-term program. The reason it's a long-term program is because it's about neural development. Okay, you guys, you're playing with your pieces of string. You've got neurons which are firing, okay, either in the left-hand side of the brain, the right-hand side of the brain. Hopefully, if you've got it in two hands, it's going across from one side to another. Okay, what's great about that, it means that if you're not list looking at me, I know you're still listening. Okay, which is great. All right, so I know that some of what I'm going to talk about is going to go back, go in here somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to cough. <coughs> you're going to take it away with you. So it's about long term. So it's about building up that relationship. Sorry. I think so. <coughs> Thank you. So it's building up. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Water was essential. Thank you. I better not put it there. No. Okay, but, but the reason that it's a long-term process is because there needs to be um, unconditional or unconditional. Uncon Competency, okay, so the doing without thinking. So, you know, like you guys that have got a, um, a car, first time you drive somewhere, you're not really quite sure where you're going, a bit anxious, a bit nervous, having to concentrate fully after you've been driving to the same place after sort of a month or two months, you're actually doing it without even knowing how you've got there. And that's what we're looking at doing about developing positive re responses to positive experiences for children in a forest. Okay, so again, I mean, lots of you have seen lots of exciting pictures. I do really like this one because you've got um, different children looking in different ways. There's obviously some kind of collaboration that's going on. Some of them who think that they want to go this way and some who want to go this way. But the great thing is, is that after a period of time, they knew that they just wanted to climb. Okay, and anything was then possible. And that stick that has just sort of like gone up in robustness, they're trying to find out, you know, how high they can stand to get up on there, if they can help each other, if they can get each other on. So the opportunities that are provided about that self-confidence, but also the innate ability to actually go through a reflective process as well. So what works, what doesn't work, so that they can actually take that on into another situation either in the woodland environment, but also fundamentally about transferring that into their everyday lives. Okay, because it's about that learning process which is important. Okay, so we have nature again just following up on a lot of the themes that we've been having already about adults, the role of the adult being flexible, supporting, cooperative and joint collaborators in the learning process. Okay, there's a, there is an issue with taking children in an outdoor space, but telling children what to do when they get there. Okay, the whole purpose, all right, what Piaget's talking about and other, you know, exponents, you know, of, you know, very, very um, powerful speakers is the fact that the power has to come from in inside. Okay, that's where the deep level learning experience is. You, you know when you have one and you have a tingle down the back of your neck of a realisation, that's the learning that you'll never forget because it's learning that gets transformed into every molecule of your body, every cell of who you are. It's not simply linked into a neuron connection that happens in the top part of your brain because if it's part of here, the learning means that no matter what the situation is, no matter what the stress levels is for that individual, it means that it can be drawn upon because it's an emotional memory. And that's what we're looking at, is supporting positive interactions and free play specifically for those reasons. Okay, and um, I've put this on it because most of you um, will... Uh, these, these children are about three years old and they're using drills and they're making, they've got little, you know, like a little wooden tags. Most of you have probably seen them, you know, for making... In fact, I think Muddy Faces have given some out, haven't they? So these guys are making their own, but what they're doing then is actually learning to use the little hand drills in order that they can um, make themselves some little medallions. Okay, the, the whole is irrespective. 
Okay, but it's actually learning the fine motor skills and the, gro and the gross motor skills. And the fact that they're working together is that it means that if one of them doesn't quite understand what's going on, they can look at the other one. So you've got peer learning that's happening at the same time. And again, it's pouring down with rain. It's pretty chilly. Um, but these kids are getting warm um, through the processes that they're going through. Most of us have heard of feral lavers. And I think just to reiterate, the processes within the forest school environment is about giving autonomy to the children. Okay, it's taking away the desires that we have in order to be able to impart our knowledge in order to save our children from making the, the same mistakes. It's not about mollycoddling and not allowing children to walk some of the same paths that we have because they have to come to their own conclusions. They have to participate in some kind of risky environment, not just physically risky, but also emotionally risky as well. Okay, because that's where the learning comes from. Okay? I love this. Okay, we've all been talking about wellness. I'm going to zip through them. Okay, the um, New Economics Foundation um, was looking at the five contributors for grown-ups in order to have well-being in your life. One of them was about connections, being active, keeping learning, giving, and taking notice. Okay? So, with people and family. So, connecting with people, family and friends. And I thought that was interesting, um, what was being said earlier on um, about the company that we keep is fundamentally important because that's the thing that will build our self-esteem. Okay? Being active, walking, running, playing and dancing. You know, the, the levels of physical activity at the beginning of puberty for girls goes rocketing down into sort of 14, 15, 16 as puberty is the onset. And I think it's really exciting the fact that you're saying to young mothers and young fathers, this is a way that you can get out again because what it's going to do is to spur the lack of um, desire to connect naturally with the environment. And I'm making brush strokes here because it doesn't happen with everyone. Um, but actually, it says that there is a gradual rise, as, as, especially with women as they have children, to actually start to reconnect with the natural environment. And what hope is that that will spearhead it. I met a parent the other day, and this is really scary, guys. Somebody in a school, was working in a special school, and this guy, his daughter was eight months old, and she had never been out of the house. Okay, and there was me doing, a, doing an inset training on outdoor learning in school. I thought he was joking. His daughter had never been out the house. I suggest there was something a bit wrong there. And that guy was teaching in a school. I will let you draw your own conclusions as to my response. Something along those lines. Key learning, okay? Discover the world and the uniqueness and investigate all the areas of possibility. Give to others altruism. Children at the ages of three, four, and five are developing the art of altruism, the art of what it feels to be like as work, work, of a bigger picture. Okay, so let's give them an opportunity to try things out and see how people are going to respond to them. But most importantly, it's about taking notice. It's about being curious. So there's that word curious. The New Economics Foundation are using those words. Catch sight of the beauty. And this is what's been coming through. Everything that we're looking at, it is beautiful. The world is beautiful. Okay, but it's the, the nuances of the natural environment that creates that beauty. And be, be aware throughout the seasons and your feelings to it. That's about being coming self-aware. Okay, this is the, um, the, the relationship with mud or the ground. This is practicing stop, drop and roll in case you catch on fire when you're lighting a fire. <coughs> I think they had more fun of stop, drop and rolling than actually doing the fire in the first place. So woodlands and green spaces support the joy of learning through the presence of loose parts and the stimulation of the imagination that those loose parts become. Because that's where the imagination comes from. That's where it comes from inside the child and not simply because somebody has told somebody to put those two things together in a set manner. And what's great is you can come back next time and they can become something completely different. 
Sorry about this. <laughs> okay. So we all do deserve a little magic, and it's great because, again, you know people have been talking about this. Um, so forest schools, you know what's important about forest schools? What I'm going to see if I can do... Can I... Oh. I need help. <laughs> Where's the technical person? Oh, Mr. Technical Person. Thank you. Can, it, can you... How do I play that? Thank you. So I thought I'd show you a little video <laughs> so I could drink my water. <laughs> things I think is very interesting I was talking to um, one of the, a lady from Norway the other day and they were they were just saying about um, they pr pr protecting um, childhood um, and natural play in the way that we may think of um, peoples from certain nations like first um, um, you know like indigenous groups who were going um, potentially um, their cultures and way of life is sort of dying out and the reason that they have these schools is about actually maintaining, as you've been talking about, the wildness of an endangered speech species, which is actually called wild children. Um, and it's one of the reasons that I think and that I'm very interested um, just in the, in the, uh, the processes in terms of um, um, actually providing children with that opportunity to actually inhabit that space um, for a long period of time. Um, <coughs> Because we know that the greater the exposure to nature, the greater the benefits. Um, and I think what's interesting about this buffer, you know, is actually being in that sort of like natural environment. It's, it's almost like, um, I always think of Thomas Tank Engine, you know, it sort of like stopped you from kind of like going and crashing into things that, um, that aren't necessarily there. 
Um, and I think with the, with the lovely diagram that we had from the, um, the wild thing earlier, you know, like having children boxed in and boxed in and boxed in, is that once we sort of step out, is it's like adversity just seems to kind of like crash in on our face and it's like um, an inexplicable unknowing about how to actually deal with that for a lot of children. Um, and that's something that I want to be able to um, push forward. Um, everybody, most of you, um, are all aware of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. One of the things that we teach, especially when we're looking at level four training, is about your abilities to be able to facilitate this change in children. And it's not just about um, having the physical, the emotional and intellectual, but it's actually having a concentration as well on that spiritual relationship, which actually can endorse itself and come out um, and kind of like really express itself in beauty, you know, and awe and wonder because of the fact that nature never looks the same. And actually that metaphor between children's lives is that each part of nature, every leaf, every tree, every stick, every, every flower is unique. It's of a species, but it's different and it's still beautiful. And for our children, that's where their unique comes from because they are biological beings. I'm going to... That's my little boy, actually. <laughs> He doesn't look like that anymore. So. But we ran a project called uh, the Dangerous Adventure Club. Um, and when he was eight years old, he, ran, he wrote the first week's activity list um, for everything that was going on, including all the songs and the rituals and, and everything. Um, you know, and, and just sort of like a real gift, because actually sometimes children know better than the grown-ups. You know? And we had loads of kids who were coming along. So we're just talking about relationships um, and I think this thing which we're managing with um, when we're doing going through the training is actually children and have getting them aware of the relationship that they have with the natural environment but also how the natural environment impacts and influences them, how parents or, or grown-ups influence them but also how they influence the grown-ups and how, how their peers influence them. And I think somebody who, I can't remember who was, said now, who couldn't go out and play because they'd actually fallen out, they weren't friends. So the parents had said that you can't now go and interact because you've fallen out with your friend. And I bet you probably thought a bit bugger, I wish I hadn't fallen out with him now because now I can't go out. Um, but I think it's that understanding that as we become grown-ups, and I mean that, see, like, I've done that, grown-ups. Um, but if, if we're aware of how all of those things are influencing us and how we can influence on them, we become powerful. It should just be one minute. And I, I just love this picture. <laughs> Did you find any magic today? Because that's where the relationship is, isn't it? You know, that kind of whole lostness um, in terms of, uh, you know, where and what's going on. And, you know, we need balance. It's a bit out of, because it's pebbles. So it goes back to Jan, your pebbles here. Um, we've just developed um, a new, the new programme as well for training about beach schools. Um, and it's not so much about what you do there, it's, but it's actually facilitating through the health and safety perspectives um, about how to access and use that space on an ongoing basis with your children. Um, and it's about being, um, having balance, and that's where my heart is, I and mean, that's where Forest Schools has come from, and that's taken me on the journey um, that I'm in today. And what I'm very excited about is, that, is the fact that, you know, we now deliver training on four continents um, and having people sort of buying into that concept because at the end of the day, nature is nature, children are children, and humanity is where we're all, um, our overriding principles um, for the natural environment. So thanks ever so much. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be here. And um, sorry about the cough. <laughs>